Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. It is 8.30 on a Saturday morning and we are going to do artisan bread in a single day. No overnight, no pre-ferment, from start to finish, from right now until a little bit later this afternoon. So let's get started. about artisan bread. This is Flour, Water, Salt, and Yeast by Ken Forkish. Now in this book he does give a recipe for same-day artisan bread. He calls it Saturday white bread. One of the other things that Ken does in that book is that he encourages his readers to develop their own recipes. And so based on his recipe I have developed mine as well. But mine, the one I'm going to demonstrate today, is a takeoff on his, but it still follows his same procedure. You know that in all of Ken's bread recipes, he uses a thousand grams of flour. And then the hydration, the amount of water, is a percent of that flour. And so his recipe calls for 72% hydration. In other words, 720 grams of water. I'm going to change that just a little bit because I'm going to mix in some wheat flour and some rye flour. Now these flours both come from grains that we have on hand and I have freshly ground these this morning. So I'm going to tell you what his recipe is and then I'm also going to, along as we go, I will explain what I'm doing that is just a little bit different. So as I have said before, um, I always use a kitchen scale to weigh out the flour. Ken gives the measurements in grams. He also provides the amount of cups, which is convenient, but weight is far more accurate, especially when you are doing artisan bread. And so that um, 1,000 grams of white flour, if you're going to follow that recipe, is seven and three quarters cups. Now I have in here 750 grams of white flour, which is five and three quarters cups plus one and a half tablespoons. So that's already in here and I always use um, King Arthur's flour. This is unbleached all-purpose flour. It's white flour. Now on, in my scale I have already weighed out 150 grams and this is dark rye. Now there's a difference between dark rye and white rye. White rye, which I also buy from King Arthur's, um, has all of the bran removed. But today I wanted to make a bread that was a little more um, richer in protein and in fiber. So I'm going to use dark rye and this is what I grind myself so everything from the original rye kernels is right here in this flour. Now 150 grams of rye flour is one cup plus three tablespoons and that's just going to go right in here. And then I'm going to add zero out my scale here. I am going to add um, 100 grams of wheat flour, which is the same thing as one and three quarters cup plus one half tablespoon. I have my sheet, cheat sheet pinned up over there on the cupboard so I can make sure that I give you the right measurements. So this is 100 grams of wheat flour. And surprise, surprise, I overshot. I'm really good at that. There we go. So 100 grams of wheat flour is going right in here. Now his original recipe calls for 72% hydration, which is 720 grams of water. 720 grams of water is 3 and 1 8 cups of water. Now I'm going to increase the hydration by just a little bit because these flours well, the wheat especially is a little bit more absorbent. So I am going to do a 74% hydration. 
And so the water needs to be between 90 and 95 degrees. So I'm just going to make sure that that's what I have here. And I'm going to measure out 740 grams of water. Now, those of you who have watched our other videos may notice that we are starting today's dough in the 12-quart bucket. Usually when we do a pre-ferment, um, such as Levan or Poolish or Biga, we start off in the 6-quart bucket. But this is the same day artisan bread, so we're mixing our final dough from the beginning in the big bucket. So I'm going to add this water. And now I'm just going to mix the flour and the, the flowers, plural, we have three types of flowers in here, and the water together. And then we are going to just auto lease this. Now, auto lease is a term that Ken uses in his book, and I'm not sure if I've introduced that term before, but in almost all of his bread recipes, uh, there is an auto lease period. And auto lease is where you mix the flour and the water, and then you let it sit for 20 minutes to 30 minutes just so, without adding anything else, without doing any further mixing, uh, just to be sure that the water is absorbed in the flour. And so all I'm going to be doing here is just mixing the flour and the water together, and then we're gonna let it sit for about 25, 30 minutes, and we'll be back to then uh, mix in the, uh, the yeast and the salt. And I'm just squishing and twisting this bucket around to make sure that I get all of the flour. And this is a little bit of a stiff dough. I can't wait to taste this bread. Um, I'm actually trying this for the first time today. I've done other ones similar with other recipes, but this is... This is the maiden voyage of this particular recipe, so we'll hope that it works. All right, so we're going to now, well, first I have to get all this sticky stuff off my hands. Okay, we're going to put the lid on and we're going to let this sit for 30 minutes. So this is the auto lease segment. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, we are back. It has been half an hour. The auto lease phase is finished. So we'll open this up. No change on the dough. It's still just the same way that we left it half an hour ago, except that the flour is much more absorbed into the water. So now we're going to add the salt and the yeast. For the salt, we're going to add 21 grams. I already have that measured out here. <clears throat> and 21 grams is the same as one tablespoon plus one scant teaspoon. And I'm just going to sprinkle this salt all over the top of the dough. And then I'm going to zero out my scale. This is the yeast that Ken recommends, and I just buy it online. And he recommends not to freeze it or refrigerate it, so I don't. And so far, so good. So we need four grams of this yeast, and that is about one teaspoon if you're going to measure it out by volume.
The salt that I use is just Morton fine sea salt. Now I will sprinkle the yeast over the top. And if you have watched our other videos, you know what comes next. This is now the mixing section and we do folding and pinching. So I'm going to demonstrate that quickly. If you need more information on that, you can certainly watch our video on uh, making artisan bread with wild yeast. So I'm reaching under the dough. I'm getting my hands wet first so that it doesn't stick to me. And I'm reaching under the dough about a fourth of the way, pulling it over the top and then punching it forward. And I'll go around this bucket, oh, three or four times, folding the dough over onto itself, reaching under, pulling over, and then pushing forward. Under, push, forward. And when I think I've done it enough times, then I'm going to do the pinching. Now, the pinching action is simply this. You're just squeezing the dough. And so I squeeze it. My hands need wetting again. And now folding again. When I pinch that strip of dough, it reminds me of a little segmented caterpillar. So folding. And now pinching. Now I can still feel the grains of salt and yeast. When I'm finished, I shouldn't feel those anymore. They should be all incorporated into the dough. So you fold and pinch until you can't feel that anymore. Now pinching. Oh, it's much better now. Probably one more of each and we'll be done. So here's folding. And now I'm going to pinch. And now I'm going to flop it upside down. The next step on this bread is to let it sit. But during the time, and this is the proofing time, um, and it will probably take four or five hours. You may have noticed that when I used to bake bread with a conventional recipe, when I was making two loaves of bread, I would use two tablespoons of yeast. That's pretty standard. And notice that we only used one teaspoon of yeast for this artisan bread. Now the difference is, because with artisan bread, we want it to ferment slowly over a longer period of time. Some of our overnight um, pre-ferments, the yeast is fermenting that dough for 18 hours or more. We leave it overnight, sometimes in the refrigerator, sometimes just out on the countertop, depending on the recipe that we are using. So this one is quite a shortcut, but it will still produce a very delicious bread. And so uh, during this proofing time, for the first hour and a half of this proofing time, we need to come back and fold it twice. Um, I'm going to do the first fold off camera, and then I will come back for the last fold. Now the purpose of folding is to develop the gluten. So that's what happens when we do that folding. We won't do any more pinching, just folding. I'm gonna do the first fold in about 10 minutes, and then I'll do the other fold probably about 45 minutes later. And so we'll come back for that fold, and then, at, um, and then we simply let it proof most of the rest of the day, five hours or so, well, five hours from our mixing time, which was right now. And then it will be ready for us to shape and bake. So I will be back for the second fold on this dough. See you in a little while. It is now time for our last fold. So here we go. Get my hands wet, reach under. And I feel quite a difference in this dough. It's much more elastic, it's much more smooth, far less sticky than it was at first. So we're just gonna go around a couple of times. Pulling from underneath, 
up over the top. I'm starting to see some bubbles forming. That's always a good thing. This dough is a little bit stiff. I'm wondering now if maybe I should have added just a little bit more water, but we'll find out. Okay, so that's our last fold. Turn it over. And it's nice now and smooth on the top, very elastic. So we're just going to now leave this alone for the next few hours so that it can ferment. And this is, this is what gives artisan bread such its fabulous flavor, is um, the, the yeast fermenting the dough. So I imagine, let's see, it's now about 11 o'clock. I imagine somewhere around 3 o'clock. Um, it's been a couple of hours since we mixed, so um, I imagine it will take at least until about 3 o'clock. But I don't really watch the clock on this except to give just sort of a rough, rough estimate the dough will tell us when it's ready. It has to um, increase in bulk, um, double, double and a half, and so we'll wait until it reaches that point. I'm going to put it over in a sunny, sunny windowsill, and so we will be back when it is time to shape the loaves. Okay, we are back, and I checked in the book, and we were supposed to let this rise until triple in size, and it has. So we are good to go. Look how beautiful this looks. There's a great big old bubble right in the middle. I think you can see that. So now what we do is we shake this. So I'm quite pleased with it so far. We have two skylights right here. And in just a little bit, we're going to be inundated with the sun, which messes up our lighting. So I'm going to try to hurry so that we can get this done before we run into that problem. So I'm going to just very carefully help this dough. Oh, it's very gassy, full of bubbles. Just what we like to see. I'm gonna help it out of the bucket instead of just dumping it. Want to get as much as possible. flour over here and I'm going to just flour this blade and we're going to cut this as equally in two as we possibly can. And then we'll just park this one over here. Now the way that we shape this, get some flour on my hands, is that we do sort of a folding, but what we're doing is we are just gently, a little at a time, forming this into a circle. We just want it into a nice round ball, or a boule, as the French say. You might hear the bubbles popping. Then I'm going to, if I put it over here, maybe you can see it. Well, I'm going to just brush some flour out of the way right here. I want to put it on an unfloured portion of the countertop here. And then this is the part where I pull it toward me. And friction holds the bottom, especially this bottom back part right here, right onto the countertop so as I'm pulling it is pulling and stretching dough over the top to put some tension right across this top that's what we want and then I this is my proofing basket I've put some flour in here already, just a little more. That one is ready. Now we'll work on this one. Again, just kind of a gentle folding, moving everything to the middle each time. 
going around or popping some bubbles. And again, pulling and stretching the top, putting a lot of tension on that as much as we can. That helps it hold its shape. So far, so good on this recipe, but we will not make the final judgment until we pull it out of the oven and see what it looks like at that point in time. All right, we have two fine loaves of bread, and they now have to proof. They will proof for, proof for probably about an hour, an hour and 15 or 20 minutes. Meanwhile, I am going to put my um, Dutch ovens in the oven because these are both baked in Dutch ovens. If you've seen other videos, you've seen me do that several times. So in about 20 minutes, I'm going to uh, turn the oven to 465, uh, my oven is a little bit hot. The temperature really should be about 475, but mine is. When it says 465, it's really 475. And then I will let those Dutch ovens heat up for about 45 minutes so that when we get ready to put these inside, those Dutch ovens, and the reason we do that is so that the steam is held inside. And that's what gives these um, boules, these beautiful artisan bread boules, the lovely crust, that, that um, crispy crust that is just so delicious. And that's how we do it, is that we bake this inside Dutch ovens. So we will be back when these have proofed and we are ready to get them in the oven. It is time to get the bread in the oven, so I'm pretty excited to show you how to do that. Now, um, Jim has gone on some errands, so he's not here to be the camera person, and I have it sitting on a tripod, so it's not going to be able to follow me around. But this is what the bread looks like. Um, if you've looked at our other videos, you will notice that this one has not proofed as high as the ones with just 100% white flour. And that's pretty common, uh, the reason being, of course, that um, the heavier flours um, make it a little bit more difficult for things to proof. So I have the camera focused on the oven and I'm just going to try to stand off to the side so you can see how I do this. The first thing that has to happen is that I'm going to open up the oven and I'm going to pull the lid off of the one of the Dutch ovens and I'll do those one at a time and then I will get the bread in. And you'll see the smoke because it's so super hot. Now I'm going to take the bread and turn it upside down in my hand and sort of fold it in half and put it right in there. Then putting my glove back on, this mitt is good for up to 500 degrees, so I'm pretty safe. All right, here's the other one, and I'm just going to move in and put it in there. Oof, I sure don't want to burn myself. Oh, okay. These will bake for 30 minutes and then I will take the lids off and for the last 10 minutes they will bake um, uncovered. And you may have noticed that I turned those loaves upside down and so when we um, formed those, shaped those um, loaves when I was putting all of the corner pieces into the middle. That is now what is on the top and it, they will open up just like a flower and just look absolutely beautiful, we hope. So these are obviously going to be just a little bit smaller than others that I have made before, but the important thing is going to be how they taste. So we'll come back in just a little bit when we're ready to take these out of the oven. Our bread is ready to come out of the oven, so I'm going to put my big old mitts on 
and I will be bringing it right over here and putting them on this rack. So I'll bring them over one at a time. So here is the first one. Oh, it's just lovely. Okay, so here they are. Well, they smell like wheat bread. And um, see how beautiful the tops are. They just open up like a flower because we invert those loaves when we put them in the oven. And these have started to crackle it's one of my favorite sounds, is listening to the crackling. Wonder if you can hear that. Woo. Lots of fun to listen to them crackle. Now we're going to let these cool for about 20 minutes, and then we will be back to open one up to see what they look like on the inside. Moment of truth. So it's been 20 minutes and these are cool enough to cut. So I'm gonna move this one to the forefront. This is my big old knife here. And here we go. This just sends crumbs everywhere with this crusty crust. So there's what the crumb looks like. Just exactly the way artisan bread crumb should look. All right, now I'm I've got some ghee right here, which is um, sort of a clarified butter. I've done a video on this too. This is really a great, great stuff. It is butter, but you can keep it on your shelf without refrigeration forever. But I'm going to take a bite without anything on it first and see how it is. Mmm. It's, um, that crust is fabulous. The crumb is soft. It has a great texture. I can taste the wheat. I can't really taste the rye very much, but it's like a good country bread. A field bread it reminds me of grains as it should because it's made of grains so now I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of ghee and put on here winner this hmm this is a recipe that I will use again. It is lovely. Not too heavy with the wheat because it's mostly white flour anyway, but enough that you can tell that it is not 100% white. So this is a, a very big success. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you at our next video.